This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Let us stand, praise God, from whom all blessings flow.
to God our Heavenly Father. We do want to thank you for allowing us to be here Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. Yes. Heavenly Father, we ask you before we get started out the service, Heavenly Father, we ask you to come into this house and bless us, Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. Bless your holy name, Heavenly Father. Yes. Heavenly Father, look down on our pastor and, and put it yes. in my yes. Lord. Yes, yes. Bless us, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we live in a troubled time. Probably going all over the world. Yes. Yes. Heavenly Father, if we need and depend on you, we realize that you can fix all the things, Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. Heavenly Father, a few days ago, a building collapsed in Florida, Heavenly Father. Yes. Heavenly Father, somebody right now may be thinking of nobody else coming out alive, Heavenly Father. You can do all things, Heavenly Father. Yes. 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 Bless us, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, right now, we stand in so many, so many uh, needs and so many things. Heavenly Father, you know what we need. Heavenly Father, we try to name every one by one. Heavenly Father, we want to forget the name of something that we need, Heavenly Father. Yes, right. Heavenly Father, we ask you to just come in and just claim Captain Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Bless us, Heavenly Father. Keep us protected, Heavenly Father. Someone may be troubled in their mind out of what they don't believe, Heavenly Father. But bless us, Heavenly Father. Bless us, Heavenly Father. Protect us, Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. Lift us up, Heavenly Father. Yes. Give us just what we need. Heavenly yes. Father, all the things are over, Heavenly Father. Bless us all. Save us all. Yes. These things and all things in you. Amen. 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 Amen.
holy time. Oh, Father, we ask you to increase your faith as we lift up these following people in prayer, God. In the name of Jesus, Father, we ask you to remember Kiki Robbins. Go with her and touch her wherever she is right now, Lord. Remember um, Elder J.C. Roberts, dear God. Strengthen him. Help him to know that you are his healer. You're Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals. Help him to know that your word, you sent your word to heal them. Help him to keep his faith up and his strength in you, dear God. Father, remember Marie Waters as she's fighting cancer. We pray that you would be with her and strengthen her body and her mind. That she'll know that you're always with her. In Jesus' name, Father, we ask you to remember those who are in the Miami building that collapsed and the many lives that are missing. Have mercy to God. Lord, your word says that the eye of the Lord is in all place, beholding the good and the evil. Father, we ask you right now to send your holy angel to rescue the lives that many other souls will come out alive. In Jesus' name, we pray. And Lord, we ask you to remember all the prayer requests that were unspoken. Remember those who are sick and shut in, and remember the bereaving families. Even now, you are the God of all comfort, and we ask you to give them comfort. In Jesus' name we pray, and we say thank you, and we forever give your name the glory and the praise. Amen and amen. Thank you, God. Um, our announcements are as follows. Choir rehearsal is the Thursday before the first and the third Sundays at 7 p.m. right here at Greater Bethel. So if you love to sing, or if you just love to make a joyful noise before the Lord, come on out and be a part of the choir. Also, the Leadership Congress will be July the 27th through the 30th. It's at the Marriott Convention Center in Augusta, Georgia. Um, please make plans to attend. Okay, and remember, biblical discussion is on still on Facebook Live at 7 p.m. If you would, just log in and be a part. All right, that concludes our announcements, and I want you to remember that God loves you. There's nothing you can do to make God stop loving you. He loves you more than you'll ever know. St. John 3 and 16 proves it. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Church say amen again. Amen. Church say amen one more time. Amen. I'm with the Father, the Son, and who? Amen. We're glad that you know him. Amen. 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 So good to be back to the house of the Lord one more time. Um, just want to remind us to keep our loved ones in prayer. Amen. 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 And one more announcement we would just like to add. I would, I would ask that you would also be mindful and keep this person in your prayer. Um, one of our very own uh, brother Washington, uh, he has been selected uh, to go to Emory University University to receive a heart transplant. Amen. Amen. We ask that you would keep him lifted up in prayer. Amen. He will not be with us, I believe, uh, in the next two weeks. He will be leaving to head to Atlanta to uh, be tested and prepped for the heart transplant. And again, I ask that you keep him uplifted in prayer. Amen. Uh, this Amen. is not a regular type of surgery. Amen. 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 This is a serious surgery. Amen. And if you've never prayed before, Amen. we ask that you lift him up in prayer. Amen. 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 Yes. Yes. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, first, I want to, uh, I'm just going to get right to the point. Um, having to do with the vaccine, vaccinations, straight to the point. I'm going to keep it blood raw. If you guys haven't got your vaccination, please, please do it. The, we, if, if you look at the news and look at what's going on, we have a new variant. A lot of different strands, new variants is happening, okay? Right now, the only way to protect yourself, the only way to protect yourself as of now is the vaccine, yeah. all right? I don't care which one you get. You can get the Tylenol vaccine, I don't care. Get the vaccine. 
now, before with the choice I'm asking, please get in the back seat because what you do in this church, I'm talking about the people in this church, what you do affects me. It takes time off for me. Let me tell you why. Because I'm going to get a call from Reverend Roberts, and he's going to say, hey, Shelby, so-and-so passed. And I'm going to take time off work to come and play this thing while you laid out in front of that, while you laid out in front of that church. I don't want to do that. I need all my time and my job. All right? Get the vaccine. Get the vaccine. Get the vaccine. I know some people in here, I've already had the, I've already had, I'm stuck on some toes here. I've already had the, the, the virus. Uh, and kind of skeptical, get the vaccine. That's all we have. That's all we have to fight, fight this thing here. Get the vaccine. Amen. That's it. That's all I'm saying. Amen. So this is one of our healthcare professionals. He is in the healthcare field. As a matter of fact, when they offered it in Savannah on the very first week, he was the one that was in line getting the vaccine. And uh, <laughs> I told him that I was going to wait until he grew another ear or another tail before I got one. And I hadn't seen either yet. So uh, he's just encouraging us as men and women to be safe in the community and uh, do your due diligence, do your own research. You cannot listen to everything that comes across on TikTok. Oh, I, I, you cannot believe everything that comes across on TikTok and Facebook and Instagram. Do your due diligence, do your own research, listen to the doctors and make your own decision from there. Amen? Amen. Amen. Are there any other announcements, anything anyone would like to add at this time? Nothing else? It's so good to see all of you here with us this morning. We pray your strength in the Lord, and we pray that God will continue to do great things in your life. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to ask that the officers come, help us raise our top in the altar. While they're doing that, the musician will give us some traveling music. The choir will come back and give us a selection. Then we will come back and do what said the Lord. Amen. Amen. Please feel free to get through the cash app and dollar sign G Buffalo Silver.
can you talk to me for a couple of minutes? And the young lady said, sure, have compassion. She sat down beside him and she began to talk. She said to him, do you know where your wife might be? After a little bit of conversation, the old man said, no, I have no idea. But I tell you what, every time I talk to a pretty woman, she seems to appear out of nowhere. <laughs> the moral of the story. Compassion will help you find things that you lost. Amen. Compassion. If we were to dissect the word compassion and define it, we would find that the word compassion literally means a feeling of deep sympathy and sorrow for another who is stricken by misfortune, accompanied by a strong desire to alleviate their suffering. Today, in the time in which we live, there is a major issue with compassion. Simply put, compassion is not easily given. Most of us, we just don't have compassion for each other anymore. Sympathy for our brother or sister has literally dwindled away drastically. We hardly even care for those stricken with misfortune. Mm -hmm. We don't have a strong desire to alleviate anybody's suffering but our own. Amen. So this creates in us a persistent lack of compassion for one another. Yes. And there is a reality that we face today. Today we face the reality that some of our brothers and our sisters really make it hard sometimes to have compassion on one another. Amen. Right. How, how, how is it that, that they make it hard for us to have compassion on one another? Well, I'll tell you this, and, 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 and it bothers me because this is what we do. We found a way how to turn help into a hustle. I'm going to say it again so you understand it. We found a way to turn help into a hustle. Goodness gracious. What, what do you mean, preacher? What are you telling us this morning? What are, you, what are you talking about? What we did was took compassion from our brothers and our sisters and we used it for financial gain instead of what we really needed. There are many stories about people who are out on the street corner in a poverty stricken area. And people are helping them left and right. They're standing on the corners with signs. They, they use all of the right words. Veteran will work for food, hungry, help. All of those words they use to play on the compassion of their fellow brothers and sisters. All of them are not guilty, but some of them are guilty in sin. And then someone one day gets the nerve to follow the man or the woman with the sign. They sit there all day and they watch them, where they go, what they do, their habits, and, and, and where they put the money in, and what they use the money for. And you, you, they, they watch them from sun up to sundown, and in the evening, when they think no one is looking, that crippled person sometimes will stand up, Amen. walk to their Mercedes Benz, get in their Mercedes Benz, and drive from the poverty stricken area to the upper echelon of town. Park their cars in their two-story home driveway on their two-acre plot. And when asked about the situation, we find that they are literally professional beggars. Some of them are even millionaires. But as a hobby, they go out and ask people for money. Dateline has done a story on it. 60 Minutes have done a story on it. And several other news entities have written a story on professional beggars. How on 
earth can we have compassion on people that hustle others out of money? And they live better sometimes than the hard worker and the giver. I grew up in the, in the part of Savannah, Georgia, on the east side of Savannah, where all around us there was poverty. A few neighborhoods over, you had the projects. You had people standing outside and asking for money at every, just about every gas station that you can go to. And I watched my father as he walked through town sometimes uh, and helped these people who were at these gas stations. He would ask them, what do you need? And some of them would say money. And he'd say, well, what do you need money for? And they'd say, to buy food. And he would ask them, well, what, what kind of food do you want? Most of the time, it'll be Burger King or Christmas because that's the area that we were in. Sometimes I watch these people sit there and eat that Burger King or, or that Crystals, and then other times we watch them take the food, ball it up, throw it in the trash can, and walk away because that's not what they really wanted. Amen. And one day my father had the nerve to ask the man, why did you ball up that good food and put it in the trash can? What is wrong with you, man? You asked me for food, and, and, and that's what I gave you. He said, no, what I really wanted was the money so I could go get me some liquor. Most of the time, we can assume that just because they're sitting there in dirty clothes, they need food. Most of the time when we see them just because their shoes are torn up don't mean that they won't choose. But if we ask them what they are in need of, most of the time they'll tell you exactly what it is. And this is not only about homeless people, but this is about any part of society because sometimes people may just need an idea or a different way of thinking. You can help them or have compassion on them in that way. Sometimes you can help them with fixing something. Sometimes they just need someone to talk to. People suffer from many things. All throughout the Bible, different men and different women suffer from different things. Some of them, they suffer from being deaf. Some of them, they suffer from being blind. Some of them, they suffer from being mute. Some of them, they suffer from hunger. Some of them, they even suffer from being But through the scripture, we learn something. We learn that these people experience compassion from someone else. And today, if we were to look out in society, a lot of the issues that we're facing could be handled with something simple as having compassion on somewhere else, on someone else. Amen. Someone to alleviate the suffering that we are facing. Someone who can have compassion on you and give you a little bit of room. I heard someone say, tell me how did you feel when you came out of the wilderness? Some of us, we've been suffering for a long time and we can't even see our hand before our face. Some of us, we've been suffering for a long time. We don't understand how we're getting out of the situation that we're getting out of. Sometimes it's not for you just sitting there looking for help. Sometimes you got to ask for help. Some of us, we say, I sat there all that time and they seen me in need and they ain't gave me a helping hand at all. Mm -hmm. And they talking about their mama. Mm -hmm. But the reality is nobody knows what you are in need of if you don't ask. Amen. Sometimes you gotta open your mouth and say, I need a car. Somebody's having compassion on you. They'll give you a car. Sometimes you just say, I need a place to stay. Somebody has on you, show you a place where you can stay. Somebody can, I need some clothes on my back. Somebody will have compassion on you. Give you a bag full of clothes. I need some shoes on my feet. Somebody will have compassion on you. Put shoes on your feet. If you don't ask, then how do you expect to get the help that you need or for someone to have compassion on you? And some of us we see sometimes people suffering and going through things and we still won't have compassion on them. We still won't show the love that they need. Amen. 
I don't do nothing until they tell me. I don't do nothing until they ask me. I don't do nothing. I don't do nothing. I done helped them two times already. Imagine if you were out somewhere and you needed a little bit of help. You were struggling. And you saw Jesus. And Jesus had already helped you with your car note. Jesus had already helped you with your house note. Jesus had already helped you with the clothes on your back. He already made sure you had a job. He already made sure you got up this morning. He already made sure that you had help and strength. He, he already made sure that you can use your limbs. He already made sure that you had a sound mind. He already made sure he did all of these things for you. But this particular time when you really needed Jesus, Jesus said, Ah, you always asking for something. I ain't gonna do it this time. My brothers and my sisters, this is the way that we should not act. There are a lot of people who are worse off than you and they need help and you have the means to help them. Sometimes you gotta have compassion on them. I got three points today. Number one, call the help together. Uh, in the Bible, in this particular text, the Bible says that Jesus called the disciples together. Uh, there was something that was going on in this particular region at this particular time. Jesus did not want to send those people away hungry. So, so what he did was call the help together. Amen. And when Jesus called the help together, they came running. And I can imagine the things that Jesus had to begin to tell them. Go, get the, go gather all of this, whatever you can, and bring it back to me. And, 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 and what the help did was they broke off, and I believe that everybody had a particular job, and they went out, and they got what Jesus did, and they brought it back. And when Jesus got these things, he blessed it, and, and he did something miraculous with it. What I'm telling you today is that if there is somebody in need of help, and you're in the house, and you got all of this help, one, two, three, four, five, six, I can't count them all right now, but you got all of this help, why not ask the help together so that you can make something miraculous happen? Jesus was, was, was really uh, literally making an example of right here. He called for help. Even Jesus needed help. My God. Some of us, we get so caught up with what Jesus can do for us, we don't, we don't, we don't even take the time out of our busy schedule to realize what we can do for Jesus. Uh-oh. Amen. What can I do for Jesus? You can try to live, live a sin-free life. To try. What can I do for Jesus? You can help your brother and your sister along the way. What can I do for Jesus? You can have compassion on one another. What can I do for Jesus? There's a lot you can do for Jesus just by helping one another, lifting your brother and your sister up. That is what you can do for Jesus. Gather the help together. You got so many people that you can call on when you're in need of help. And I learned this from living in my family that when one person is in trouble, all they got to do is make a phone call and that thing becomes infectious and everybody shows up with something that you need. You better not say you're hungry. You will have so much food in your house you won't know what to do with it. You better not say you're thirsty. You have so much drink in your house you won't know what to do with it. You better not say you need help with clothing. You have so much clothes in your house you don't know what to do with it. If you don't think I know what I'm talking about, ask somebody in this family. Amen. Amen. And we didn't learn that from granddaddy. We didn't learn that from great granddaddy. We got that from the Bible. Help you one another. Number two. Have compassion Oh my goodness, it's been that long. <laughs> Number, two, Number two, have compassion. Have Brothers and my sisters, when we're talking about having compassion, what you really want to do is just alleviate someone's problems. Having compassion, someone is you just 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 giving something to them that they need that will alleviate their suffering. The Bible says that the poor will always be among us. Amen. How many of you believe that? Amen. It don't matter 
matter what, how the world turns or what season changes, the poor is always among us. There's always going to be someone less fortunate than you and I. We have to learn how to break loose from our old ways of not helping people and get into the new way of helping people. We got to break from our old ways of not giving and learn how to get into the new way of giving. The Bible even declares that God loves a cheerful giver. Giving is a part of Now we got some stingy people. Amen. My God. Right. We got some stingy people. We got some people that don't even want to give $10 out of $100. Could you believe that? Yeah. Now God has blessed you with the ability to gain $100. And the church is raising money or somebody is in need or there's someone who's less fortunate and you just cash your check for $10. your attention. Amen. Some of us be so stingy we won't give up the $10. Amen. And you walk on by and you keep on moving and then somewhere along the day you had to pay something that was unexpected cost you $50 or $10. Amen. And then you realize if I was going to do that with the $10 I could have gave the $10 to the person who was in need. And later on that day, you lose $50 from something unexpected. And by the end of the day, you stuck with $10. I'm amazed at how God works sometimes. He reminds you of the things that you could have done and, and give you that same exact thing at the end of the day. Amen. Happened to me quite a few times. And I had to learn in my short life. That God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. The more he gives, the more, the more you give, the more he'll give to you. Amen. I'm a witness. Amen. I've learned how to become a cheerful giver when people ask for things sometimes. I don't have a problem just reaching in my pocket. Sometimes they don't even ask. I can see the need is that I will just go into my pocket and give them what they need. Having compassion. Number three. Number three. Feed the hungry. Feed the hungry. Someone today is hungry. Who's hungry today? Everybody should be hungry. Hungry for something. Hungry spiritually. Hungry physically. Hungry mentally. Someone asked at the end of the service one day. They said, why do you say at the end of the service, let's go eat? And I had to break down and tell them one day. I, I, I literally got that from my cousin. Sylvia, because after every service, she said, let's go eat what we eat today. But then I took what she said, and I, I, I made it make sense to me in a spiritual way. People are hungry all over the world physically and mentally and spiritually. So when I say this, we're actually saying, if you're hungry in any way, go find the food that you're searching for. Continue to feed the hungry through the word of God. That's always saying at the end of the sermon. You can take it either way you want to. If I say let's go eat at the end of the sermon, you can go out and eat physically or you can go out and eat mentally or spiritually. But anytime you leave the house of the Lord, you should, you should still be hungry and thirsty after righteousness. You still should be hungry after spirituality. You still should be looking
my feet listening to me and, and the least that I can do I see the suffering I, I see the hunger the least that I can do is get them some food in their stomachs Amen. and the disciples said to him where are we to get enough bread for, for such a desolate place if you look around there ain't enough food for you to feed these people and, 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 and Jesus said to them how many loaves do you have and they said we got seven loaves and we got a few fish and, 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 and I imagine that Jesus internalized that uh, uh, for those of you who have never seen uh, food multiply I, I'm going to tell you a story I remember going to one of my uncle's houses and, and he always would tell me God can multiply food and I, I, I took it at first and I said I understand that God is a miracle worker. He said, no, you're going to see God multiply food. I said, yeah, I understand that. I'm a preacher. I, 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 I understand, but, but I didn't really understand. And so he began to cook food, and I looked in the pot, and there was just enough food for my family and his. And then I see another family come in that was a little greater than my family. And then I watched another family come in, and after we had
selected to play for the Buffalo Bills. And he contacts me to this day and thanks me for the things that I said to him. God can multiply the small things and make them great. Let us stand all over the sanctuary. The doors of the church are open. There may be someone who's out of the ark of safety. There may be someone who's wanting to be baptized. There may be someone who's looking for a church home today. Maybe someone who wants to be saved. We ask that you come. Don't wait for tomorrow, for tomorrow may be too late. Come now while yet the blood is still running warm in your veins. Would there be one today? Would there be one today? May God bless you. Georgia, signed the Reverend Solomon J. Roberts, Jr. The meaning of baptism. Know ye not that so many of us as we are baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized in his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so also shall we walk in the newness of life. Romans 6, 3, and 4. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Is our prayer. Amen. <laughs> Going to ask um, Brother and Sister S.Q. Roberts to come forward. S.Q. Roberts, see you. Brother and Sister S.Q. Roberts, see you to come forward. Amen. church with a Bible for your daughter, Sarah Roberts. It is inscribed and personalized with her name. God bless you. Amen. Let us stand all over the sanctuary.
Let us follow the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Restful in the Bible of the Zohar. Gives forth now and forevermore. And we say, Amen.